So can we now begin the official launch of Accelerate Convention 2023 by the Honourable Minister of Youth and Sports Malaysia, Yang Berhormat NIO. So, could we have the stage? Thank you. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for inviting me to come and launch today's convention. When I received the invitation to come to this event, I was a bit confused. So usually we get a lot of invitations and we have so many ministers, different ministries with different roles. And we will always try to pass on the invitation to the right ministry so that we do not overstep our boundary launching things that we're not supposed to launch. Uh, and so when I got the invitation for this convention, I said, am I speaking to youth? Uh, not really, uh, but they are professional speakers. And so I said, I, I don't really know how that's connected to my ministry. Uh, but they say, no, 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 please, please come. So when I heard about Dato' Lawrence, and I have to try to find a connection, when I was a student in Taylor's College, um, we, I participated in a lot of the Leo Club programs in school. And Dr. Lawrence was uh, a lion, uh, if I'm not mistaken. He was a speaker for sure. Uh, and that was about 30 years ago. And, and today I heard that he's, he's your founder and he's also here. So I've not seen him for three decades. So it's really good to see him again. And he still looks the same. <laughs> When I was in the holding room, I asked the organizer, who is a professional speaker? He says, if you use your voice for an income, you are a professional speaker. So I'm a politician. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am certain now I, I am qualified to come and at least share my experience. So we have a lot of challenges the moment we are invited to speak and when we own the stage. Um, I want to just share with you my personal experience. Uh, I've been in politics for 29, no, not 29, since I was 29 years old uh, in 2008. The other day, uh, I was with our Prime Minister and he reminded me of my first political rally, the first time I got on a political stage to speak because he, uh, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim was made to introduce me on stage, my first rally. Um, I, I grew up as a leader, student leader, so I was very familiar to speaking on stage in school. My first public speaking event uh, was a competition when I was 13 years old to uh, enter a storytelling competition. I remember being trained and groomed for that session. And my first story was about the first banana. That was my, the story given to me. And to illustrate that story, you have to use you know, facial expression, hand gesture, and, and all that. I still remember everything my, my teacher taught me. But when I graduated and unexpectedly thrown into politics at the age of 29, that was an unfamiliar stage for me. And every time, you know, when you are invited to an unfamiliar stage, it's not easy to say what you're familiar with. And so my first rally, political rally, was disastrous, simply because I was never groomed for politics. And you know, I take you back to the year 2008 in Malaysia, in Malaysia in 2008, there was no strong opposition. And we were running for the opposition. Back then, when you say you want to enter politics, everyone you know would discourage you from going for it. And the only reason why I was given the opportunity was because no one wanted that seat. <laughs> Who would want to part with 100,000 ringgit? Didn't have that money to start with and to go up, campaign for two weeks, and then be defeated. And 
you know, to enter politics, sometimes it's very dirty. Everything you have done in the past will be told in, in the papers. Uh, and nobody really wanted to risk that. So I was given that seat because it was my hometown, Subang Jaya. And on the way to that rally, the first ever rally, I cried in the car, I told my husband, I don't think I can do this, I have no words, I have no words, I cannot say anything to the people that I'm supposed to lead if I win the elections. When I went there, I got up, ah, the Prime Minister then, he was the opposition de facto leader, because there was no official coalition at that point in 2008. Uh, he was not there yet, and so they in invited me to go up. It was about this size. No tables and chairs, it was just by the roadside. People were just standing around, curious to find out who would the opposition send to represent them in this hometown of mine. So I got up and I introduced myself like this, uh, giving you some background of my school days, my history. I spoke about the first banana, I think, I can't really remember. And then I quickly sat down. Because I really thought at that point, here I am, just two weeks to burn time, just to occupy that space. I'm not going to win. I'll go back to work. Uh, I'll just experience this campaign. After I sat down, and then I realized, they said, oh, the event really has not started. We're just trying to kill time. We're waiting for Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim to arrive. <laughs> and then they called me up a second time. And by then, I had no content. Because I didn't know anything about politics, apart from the fact that I just want to give it a try because everybody says you cannot win. And, but this is my hometown, I'm passionate about this place. And so I remember when Dato Sri Anwar arrived and he would, re he would remind me again and again. Um, he said when he, he came on stage, he asked them, bring up the candidate. And he looked around, he said, no one looked like the candidate. <laughs> but that's very true. I was 29 years old. I was very, very slim because I just got married, you know, in, in Malaysia. Before your wedding, they always prepare themselves. They, they would lose a lot of weight so that they could fit into the wedding gown. Uh, and so I looked very frail and I, I didn't look like a candidate at all. And so he would always remind people that he, I was like a schoolgirl, uh, 29 and now I am 44. Uh, so, I wanted to share with you about the different stages that I've been on since then and how to be invited again. You really need to be effective with your communication. Now, when I talk about being effective with your words, it's not really about perfect grammar, uh, sweet voice, being able to command your attention. It's also a mixture of content and speaking with conviction. And, and so for me, every time I take a stage, I always want to make sure that by the time I get down, by the time I leave the place, people would feel better, people would believe what I've told them. And they would also walk away believing that they can also achieve the same thing. And so, from 2008 till now, Malaysia has gone through big changes in the political scene. When in 2008, that was the time nobody thought opposition would win. And we went on to win five states. And then we moved to the next term. By the time I got to my next term, it was about changing government, not about winning election, opposition making it, it's about changing government. We failed in my second term. I remember speaking at the rally. It was a big stadium in Kelana Jaya. It was called a black rally because people were so upset that we could not change government. And, and so when I, I went to that place, getting up on stage in front of a stadium of people who are disappointed and angry, how do you communicate more anger to this group of people? because they want to be inspired that they can continue fighting. And by then, when I got to the stadium stage, I realized then that people don't really care what you have to say in a the stadium. They just love the fact that they are there. 
So even if you say, hey, they will scream. <laughs> even if you say very simple words, few sentences, they would cheer at every uh, sentence simply because people go to a stadium for a celebration. Whether it's concert or it's opening ceremony, they just want to be in that room, in that space. And so that stage was the easiest stage. When you have a stage full of audiences, big crowd, really, it's not difficult. The most difficult stage for me are the stages where there's just you and one audience. Because you have to use more words to persuade that audience, to capture that audience. And so the most difficult stage for me is speaking to a friend who is completely disillusioned. A friend who, has, who does not believe in what you do or in what you say anymore. Most difficult conversation are people who want to migrate from Malaysia. Young people, I've given it a try, it's not going to change, I want to leave. Those are very difficult conversations to have. How do you speak from your heart and convince that person that his personal experience may still be wrong about how he's feeling, that things can change? And then you move along to a different stage. For me, as a people's representative, I have come to realize that two places where you know words are just not enough in a mortuary. So I've been to the mortuary uh, when I was Deputy Minister for Women, Family and Community Development. My second day at work, a baby was killed by the nanny, uh, a toddler, and his body was hidden in the refrigerator of the home. And when the, the parents found out, uh, of course they were heartbroken. Uh, so because there was no childcare for the mother who's a nurse. And I remember going to the mortuary and looking at the baby and then looking at the broken-hearted parents and their grandparents. It was so difficult. There was no words, literally no words. I couldn't say anything. Apart from, you know, when I get back to Putrajaya, I will work to ensure that this stops here. It does not repeat again. The second stage that was very difficult is at funerals of young people who have committed suicide. How do you tell parents who feel crushed and feel experience guilt that they were they didn't pick up the signs or they, they just didn't know very difficult but the last one this was the most recent stage I've been on in a sense I was at the Sea Games in Cambodia Sea Games today is the last day of Southeast Asian Games Malaysia is participating uh, in it and we targeted 40 gold today is our last chance we are now at 30 so everybody's angry in Malaysia because we are 10 medals behind. And I remember going there for the indoor hockey team. The indoor hockey team, Malaysia, is in the, Malaysia was in the finals with Indonesia. And Malaysia was leading 3-0 until the last few minutes when Indonesia gave it their all. The goalkeeper left the goal came out and they had an additional player just playing their heart out. And in that short time, Indonesia scored two goals. And in the last 18 seconds before we won our goal, they scored the equalizer. It was three all. And then there was a penalty shootout. And Malaysia lost in the penalty. And then when they got off the court, they said, Minister, please go and encourage our boys. I went to see the boys. They were in tears, crying. And then I read the online comments. Oh, you should scold the team. You should give them, you know, a word for, for just so embarrassing, for not meaning it. But my experience at the court, you know, people who played, believing that they were, because, you know, they went through all the stages believing they could win the goal. And down to the last 18 seconds, it was taken away. And they played their best and they were in tears. So in scenarios like that, as a professional speaker, trained 
to speak in so many different stages, what words can you offer? Try again. Don't give up. I'm sure they have heard of it. So really, um, I had no words. I, I just said thank you. I just said thank you on behalf of the government of Malaysia. Thank you for playing your best. Uh, and it's not over. But I want to tell you, to, to end my speech, I just want to tell you that um, the audience will always be able to sense sincerity and conviction. Whether your words are coming from a place, a very honest place. And in today's society, very few people can find honesty in the workplace or even at home. People struggle to find honesty sometimes. And so when you have an audience and when you want to capture that audience, be honest with your words because maybe they have never, never experienced honesty. And if they experience honesty, they will believe everything you say. And they will walk away believing that, you know, I, I can do this, I can do this. And so fast forward after four elections, we went from not being able to win as an opposition to winning states and to change government. And we have been able to change government since then, four times, four times. So today in Malaysia, it's not difficult anymore, like in 2008, to tell people that your ballot paper will be able to change the destiny of the nation. Everybody believes that now. It has only taken us four elections. So any, anything, anything is possible. And I want to end with this. I'm certain that in your workshop, they will teach you about your, your challenger today is no longer another bad speaker, your enemy. Your enemy are social media apps that are reducing the time for your words to come out. TikTok today is no longer about talking. It's all about singing and dancing, moving. And, and so as a politician now, they say you've got to capture the young voters. You have to speak. You can't speak anymore. There's no more political rallies. Even when you do physical political rallies, it's hard to get the audience because everybody's attention span now is about one minute. It's about the catchy music and catchy dance move. Open the TikTok and see millions of views for movement without words. So professional speakers, your greatest opponent now are apps like this to capture a very young audience that will have no more patience to even sit through an opening remarks like this. <laughs> so all the best. I wish you success. And just remember, keep engaging. Just don't give up. Don't give up. So I applaud your effort to come and improve yourself, to equip yourself for the challenges ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Wiley. Can I please invite you to remain at the stage?